Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about the column chromatography. In this video, we are going to discuss about the following contents. First, introduction about column chromatography, followed by components of column chromatography, principle of column chromatography, steps in column chromatography, factors affecting the column efficiency, applications of column chromatography, advantages of column chromatography, and finally, limitations of column chromatography. Column chromatography. Column chromatography is a separation technique used to, to isolate and separate mixtures of chemical substances into its individual compounds. Either small or large scale column chromatography can be carried out to separate and purify the analytes. Column chromatography is a solid liquid technique in which the stationary phase is a solid and the mobile phase is a liquid or gas. In column chromatography, a mixer is dissolved in a solvent and poured down a column packed with a solid material. Different components within the mixer flow out of the column at different rates depending on their absorption to the solid material. In this way, the different components were isolated and separated. Column chromatography was first developed by the American chemist D.T. Day in the year 1900 while M.S. Sweat used the absorption columns in his investigation of plant pigments. Components of column chromatography. There are six components of column chromatography. They are stationary phase, mobile phase, column, injector system, detector or chart recorder, and finally, fraction collector. The first component of the column chromatography is stationary phase. Stationary phase is a solid material, usually silica gel, having a good absorption property. Stationary phase should be suitable for the analytes to be separate and the stationary phase should not cause any hindrance in the flow of the mobile phase. The second component of the column chromatography is mobile phase. Mobile phase is made up of solvents that complement the stationary phase. The mobile phases or solvents act as a developing agent to promote separation of the components in the sample to form bands and an eluting agent to remove the components from the column that are separated during the experiment. The third component of column chromatography is column. A column material and its dimension are very crucial to support the stationary phase and promote effective separations. For liquid chromatography, the column length is 2 to 50 cm long and 4 mm internal diameter and fabricated with stainless steel. And for gas chromatography, the column length is 1 to 3 meter long and 2 to 4 millimeter internal diameter and fabricated either with glass or stainless steel. The fourth component of the column chromatography is injector system. Injector system is responsible for delivering test samples to the column stock in a reproducible pattern. The fifth component of the column chromatography is detector or chart recorder. Detector or chart recorder is used to give a continuous record of the presence of the analytes in the LU as it emerges from the column. Detection is usually based on the measurement of your physical parameters such as visible or ultraviolet absorption or fluorescence. A peak on the chart recorder represents each separated analyte. The sixth component of the column chromatography is fraction collector. A fraction collector is used for collecting the separated analytes for further biochemical studies. Principle of column chromatography. In column chromatography, the stationary phase is packed into a glass or metal column. The mixture of analytes or sample is then applied and the mobile phase commonly referred to as eluent, is passed through the column either by a use of 
pumping system or applied gas pressure. The stationary phase is either coated onto discrete small particles and packed into the column or applied as a thin film to the inside wall of the column. As the eluent or mobile phase flows through the column, the analytes or samples separates depending on the different degree of adhesion to the silica of each component in the sample or the compound mixer. This is the principle of column chromatography. Steps in column chromatography. There are four steps in column chromatography. The step one is preparation of the column. Step 2 is introduction of the sample. Step 3 is elution. And the step 4 is detection of compounds. The first step of the column chromatography is preparation of the column. The column mostly consists of a glass tube packed with a suitable stationary face. A glass wool or cotton wool or an asbestos pad is placed at the bottom of the column before packing the stationary face. After packing, a paper disc kept on the top so that the stationary layer is not disturbed during the introduction of the sample or the mobile face. There are two types of preparing the column. They are dry packing or dry filling is the first type. In this, the amount of absorbent needed is added as a fine dry powder in the column and the solvent flows freely through the column until equilibrium is achieved. And the second type is wet packing or wet filling. In this, the slurry of absorbent is prepared along with the mobile phase and is poured into the column. It is regarded as the ideal technique for packaging. Before using the column, it should be washed properly and dry. The column should be free from impurity and uniformly filled with the stationary phase. The second step of the column chromatography is introduction of the sample. The sample which is usually a mixture of components is dissolved in minimum quantity of the mobile phase. The entire sample is introduced into the column at once and get absorbed onto the top portion of the column. From this zone, individual sample can be separated by a process of elution. The third step of the column chromatography is elution. By elution technique, the individual components are separated out from the column. The process of elution can be carried out by employing two techniques. The first technique is isocratic elution technique. In this technique, the same solvent composition or solvent of same polarity is used throughout the process of separation. Example, use of chloroform alone. The second technique is gradient elution technique. In this technique, solvents of gradually increased polarity or increased elution strength are used during the process of separation. Example, initially benzene, then chloroform, then ethyl acetate, then chloroform. The fourth and final step of the column chromatography is detection of compounds. If the compounds separated in a column chromatographic procedure are colored, the progress of the separation can be simply be monitored visually. If the compounds undergoing separation are colorless, then small fractions of the elutin are sequentially collected in the tubes that are labeled through TLC the composition of each fraction is determined. Next, some of the factors affecting the column efficiency are dimensions of the column, particle size of the adsorbent, nature of the solvent, temperature of the column, and pressure. Applications of column chromatography. Column chromatography is used in the purification of compounds. Column chromatography is used in the separation of molecules for a mixer and using it in the formation of new substances. Column chromatography is used to know the drug estimate in a drug solution. 
column chromatography is used for the removal of impurities or purification process finally column chromatography is used for the isolation of metabolic fluids from a biological fluid advantages of column chromatography any type of mixer can be separated by column chromatography any quantities of the mixer can also be separated by column chromatography wider choice of mobile phase is used for column chromatography in preparative type the sample can be separated and reused using column chromatography finally automation is possible in column chromatography limitations of column chromatography there are some limitations column chromatography is a lengthy and time consuming method is the first limitation the second limitation is column chromatography uses more amount of solvents that are required which may be very expensive and the third limitation is automation makes the column chromatography technique more complicated and costly dear viewers that's all about the column chromatography thank you for your support thank you